Mr. Beast and Ninja are hosting one of the biggest League of Legends tournaments and I wasn't invited. So I'm gonna pull a Chef Carl Casper in the feast that I was gonna make for them, I'm gonna make for you. Who do you think Ninja's and Mr. Beast's mains are? They're obviously not set. We don't actually need this quite yet, but we are going to be starting with Morgana. Morgana is sinful, and honestly, Morgana is a waifu. For Morgana the waifu, I am making devil food cupcakes. I don't think there's anything more fitting than devil food cupcakes because she's literally a fallen angel. So in my bowl, I have some devil food cake mix. Yes, cake mix. If this is good enough for my mother-in-law, who is a world-renowned cake artist, it's good enough for me. Along with that cake mix, I'm doing two whole eggs, about four ounces worth of whole milk, about two ounces worth of oil. You could also use melted butter in this case. Then of course, the secret ingredient, Jello. Yes, Jello does really change the taste of this cake mix. We just want like a quarter of this package, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. Yes, I am eyeballing baking. Please forgive me. Oh, okay. Hopefully that stays on there. This is gonna be interesting. Once this is nice and smooth, we're gonna give this a taste test because I don't listen to the box instructions. So good. I'm gonna throw in like a, a half a cup worth of chocolate chips, just all the chocolate chips. Give us another quick mix. Once that's all done mixing, we just gotta pour this bad boy out. Now listen, I'm not telling you to do this because I don't wanna get in trouble. You know what's gonna happen. Why would I do it off screen? You already know that was gonna happen. On my cupcake tray, I'm just gonna give this a quick spray down. This is not only going to help it release later when it bakes, but it's also going to help your cupcake paper things stick. Cupcake paper things, what What are the cupcake liners? Cupcake skirts? I actually don't really know the technical term for this. Now I'm using a portion scoop, which is this little purple guy, and it's like three quarters of an ounce, but what I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna fill these up till they're about halfway full, and however much that ends up being, which that's about, that's, that's about nice. That's basically how far you want it. Yeah, you see that? Some of these are looking a little shallow, so I'm gonna sacrifice this one, and we're gonna use some of it as its chocolate blood sacrifice and add it to some of the other ones because I don't want them to be that small. Okay, we're making two blood sacrifices. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this. This is gonna go in the oven 350 for like 15 minutes. While the cupcakes are in the oven, I actually have to make the frosting and I accidentally over the butter is a little warmer than it should be. This should be room temperature. It's gonna be okay. One part butter, unsalted with one part cream cheese. So in this case, I have four ounces of butter and four ounces of cream cheese. Now to the one part of butter, one part cream cheese, we're gonna do one part powdered sugar. This is super simple, guys. Definitely going to need that splash of vanilla. That actually, that was, that was more than I thought was in there. The cooking show where the recipes are made up and the points don't matter. What is happening today? Who designed this? Just mix it until it's smooth, you know? Make sure you, you, you taste this. That's good. Yeah, actually, more sugar. I also have a feeling this is not enough, but we'll find out later when we go. I'm just not, I'm not gonna deal with it right now. Gonna hit this with a little bit of a red food dye. Yep, that's happening. Oh, that got really red. That's okay. There we go. There we go. Should have done black like Morgana's heart. Mm, that's good. Look at how beautiful and delicious that looks. We also don't need this until tomorrow because yes, this is a two day feast that I'm making. I'm definitely gonna need more of this. Frosting part one done in the fridge. Okay, Pantheon time. Did I say Pantheon time? I meant uh, pull the cupcakes out time, because we need the oven. Look at these gorgeous, look at, look at, see that? See how beautiful that looks? How simple cupcakes are to make? Probably shouldn't put this on my cutting board because it's really hot. Okay, there we go. We have to let these cool for like 10 minutes, then we get to pull them out. Hide them from Gandalf, because he will try to eat them and it's chocolate. It's not good for cats. Now we can start Pantheon. For Pantheon, we are going to be making baguette. This recipe actually comes from my friend Brian. Into a large bowl, I have 225 grams worth of nice like warm water. I microwave it for like 30 seconds, okay? 350 grams worth of bread flour. Take all this, stir this up with a spoon, make sure that all that flour and water gets hydrated. Now once your spoon has failed you like that top laner who keeps running it down, we're gonna use a wet hand. All we're trying to do is just like bring it back together. Just gently, don't work it too much. You know, I really love this long sleeve that you can pick up at chefpk.com, but uh, it, is fall it is falling down my arms, so we might have to change. Bam, shaggy, just like that. Once we have the shaggy mess, we're gonna take 10 grams worth of salt, pop that right on top of it, throw a lid on it, let this sit for like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, some kind of time. Now while that dough and salt is resting, we have 30 grams worth of water and then about eight grams worth of yeast. Gonna pop that in there, do one of these. We're gonna get a lot of utensils dirty today. <sighs> Didn't mix right. I need like three dishwashers. Once our sludge is ready, we're just gonna let this hang out right over here. And then uh, we do nothing for 15 to 20 minutes. 
one eternity later. You know what? No, we're not gonna sit around for 15 to 20 minutes because we have a lot of work to do. So I'm gonna actually start making the chimichurri that I need for Olaf's dish. Olaf is Olaf the butcher. So for him, we're gonna be doing a really beautiful flank steak with a really nice chimichurri. And I have 15 minutes before I have to deal with the bread again. So let's see if we can do this. Get most of these stems out of here. These stems are freaking massive. What is happening with this bunch of parsley? Yes, I'm sorry, this is a bunch of parsley. I forgot to mention that. Bam, parsley, clean. Get all of these massive stems out of the way. We're gonna chop this up really, really nice and fine because chimichurri needs to go on this steak and it needs to look pretty. Line it up, yeah, see this? This is called le technique. Woo, that's a, that's a forearm workout right there. Parsley goes in your bowl. 10 minutes left, 10 minutes left before I have to deal with the dough. Now into this, we are also adding one shallot. I'm gonna do a quick little mince on here first and then move on to the other ones and then give them a nice chop after that too. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, shallot done. Bring the bowl back over. Oh, those are strong shallots too. I still have the worst reactions to anything with onions. Oh my God. Next, garlic, two cloves, palm strike. Oh my God, I was just like, it, that was like an actual deterrent for me. Holy crap. Can you see my eyes watering right now? From a shallot. Garlic, give it a nice chop. Once you have that chop, right, nice and rough. Just gonna smush it just a little bit. Oh, six minutes, yeah. I could have also just used my garlic press. That would have been a smart thing to do. Garlic going in, right into the bowl. Next, one lemon, no sticker, no seeds. Now for spice, I'm just using some regular, like red pepper chili flakes. You can also use habanero, jalapeno, whatever. Just get some chilies in there. Nice heavy pinch of salt. Healthy, healthy glug of olive oil, like a significant amount. Just keep going. Just keep going until you can stir it together. Might actually need a little more acid. I'm gonna throw in some red wine vinegar to this too. I told you, where the recipes are made up, show doesn't matter. Three minutes left on the clock. Three minutes left on the clock. Taste test. Okay. Good, a little salty. I'm gonna do some more black pepper, but it's really nice. I think it's gonna go really nice on the steak. Two minutes and 38 seconds left. We did chimichurri in less than 15. Oh yeah, that's nice. Chimichurri into your container in the fridge. Now it's been about 20 minutes on our dough. This is when we're gonna take our yeasty milkshake as Brian likes to call it, plop it all into there. Just, just gross. It just looks so weird. It smells delicious though. Once that's all in there, this is where we have to mix everything by hand. You gotta be careful so it doesn't squirt all over the place, but make sure that all of that dough is mixed with all of that yeast. And not gonna lie, this dough feels a little wet. I might, I might go grab some flour. I'm just gonna sprinkle some flour in there. See, you don't always need a recipe with baking. Beautiful. See that? That's what I was looking for. It's nice, it's still tacky. Yep. We're gonna let it rest for 30 minutes, then do the folds and continue that until it's done. We have a little bit of downtime while that dough is rising and I'm trying to be efficient. So one thing that I like to do is actually like go over my prep list because this is so much food and it's so many dishes. Oh my God, we didn't buy this. I didn't buy fish for a collie. Oh God. Okay. We have to go buy fish. Kali's getting a sashimi platter and we have to make the wontons. Oh my God, I have so much to do. I think we can do it before dinner tomorrow night. I should have given myself like three, three days is too much. We can do this in two. But now I have to travel two hours to go get fish. Before I went and traveled to go get fish, I made sure I folded my dough twice and let it rest for that full 90 minutes. After those two folds, it's been about 90 minutes. And this is why I usually just buy my bread. You can see how nice and bubblicious is that? A, why would I use that word? It's nice and airy. You know, do a little sprinkle right on top, just a little bit of flour, a little bit of flour on the cutting board. Bam, get this all on there. Now I'm gonna cut this in half because this is supposed to give us two baguettes. I wasn't gonna weigh this, but it's gonna bug me if I don't weigh it. This is 323 grams. Oh, this is 303. That's pretty close. We're just gonna do a little boom. That's even enough. Now we do have to shape this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a little pinch and a little tuck and we're gonna gently bring this back together. You can see I have a little bit too much flour on here. So it's actually kind of hard to work with. If it's not really rolling, you can put a little bit of water on the cutting board and then put this down and it'll help that dough stick. So you can actually roll this thing. Look at that beautiful piece of dough. Yeah, you know, plump boy. There, now these have to rest for another 35 minutes. I guess it's enough time for like a match of Arum. So after a couple of matches of arum, our dough is ready to form. You can see why I'm splitting this recipe up into two different days because the baking aspect takes a while. But look at how beautiful that really is. So beautiful. We flour the surface, right? A little bit, plop it down. We're gonna work with this seam first because we actually need to form this into that baguette shape. I'm gonna degas this just a little bit, which means I'm just pushing it down. Then I'm gonna take the top part. We're gonna fold it and press in. Fold it and press 
in, press in, press in, you get the picture until you have your beautiful little log shape. Then we're gonna take this and we're gonna gently start rolling it out, keeping this seam. I want this to be like a foot long, you know? Then once I get to the end, I like to kind of use the heel, I guess, of my hand and then press it to where you get these tiny little, the little, little thingies on the side. See that? Beautiful, beautiful baguette, zoom. I have a sheet tray that I just lined with some parchment paper. This is gonna go right onto there. Nice and beautiful, oh, so nice. We're gonna do the same thing with the other one. Take the second bad boy, boom, right there. Now the last thing we have to do is actually score these. You wanna use a razor blade or an incredibly sharp knife for this and you have to score these because if you don't, then what ends up happening is the gas in the air has nowhere to escape. And so once it bakes, it's basically gonna turn into a football and we don't want that. So I'm gonna score one in the middle, making sure it's it's kind of deep. One, two, one, two. There we go, it's pretty solid. That should open up nicely. Do the same thing down here. And there we go, now we, have to let it proof for another hour. Throw another sheet tray on this, and this has to go in the pantry uh, because I feel like Gandalf would try to eat it. It's been the final hour for resting, and our dough is ready to throw in. I'm so I'm so done with this. I like was looking forward to this, and this literally has taken me about five hours. If we include the cupcakes, that's fine. That's fine. We're gonna spray these down, and this way the crust doesn't develop too quickly. This will give the crust like a really nice chewiness to it, and always make sure you spray it down if you're doing a baguette because I can't steam in this oven. So this is gonna get baked for about 15 minutes into the oven at like 400. 50 degrees and then we got to rotate it then bake it again for another like 15 minutes so this was only in the oven for about 25 minutes and these these guys these guys cooked pretty quickly and i don't know maybe my oven is off uh maybe maybe the temp is off but they got a little dark on the bottom so we're just gonna do one of those things that your mama did when you were younger and just scrape it these pans never do it right for me i might need new pans blame everything except for our own mistakes like everyone in league it is 3 p.m. day one. We gotta get stuff ready to finish this feast for tomorrow, which means I actually have to go get all that sashimi. It's day two, baking is done. I'm not wearing any pants. It's too early for pants. We have to get the brisket going. The reason why I'm doing this so early is because the brisket has to cook slow and low for like six or seven hours. This guy is not awake, so I'm gonna take over for a quick second. Make sure you season this with a ton of black pepper and then a heavy, heavy pinch of salt. You wanna season both sides of your meat. Once you've seasoned one side, place it onto a sheet tray with a baking rack and then season the other side. And then this has to go in the oven around 300 degrees Fahrenheit for around five or six hours. And please, for the love of God, man, and put some pants on. Take a good look. I have to now drive an hour to go get sushi. And then this happened. I put my pants on to go get sashimi and we got stuck at the train track. It's gonna be one of those days. I eventually got to Awajamaya where I picked up my Kewpie mayo, some green onions we needed for some sauce. Of course, some Spam musubis because those are amazing. Sashimi grade salmon, sashimi grade tuna, a bit of seaweed salad, and then of course some ginger to finish it. The bag is secured. We have all the things we need. Hopefully there isn't a massive amount of traffic on the way home, but I want, I want another coffee. Hello, we are back from the store, which took almost two hours to get all of this ready. We got both of our fish that we need for today. That's gonna be super nice. I also have a surprise. This is gonna be good. You see where I'm going? With this. We're gonna take the shrimp chips, okay? And we're gonna coat the shrimp in it. It's not on the menu, but I had some inspiration. After all that grocery shopping, I wanna say thank you to this week's sponsor, Fetch. Fetch is the really easy to use app on your mobile phone where you can scan any of your receipts and collect rewards. For something like this massive grocery list that I just had, I can easily pull out my receipt, scan that receipt, and then collect any rewards from it. As you collect all those points, you can then use those for rewards. And one of my favorite things are Amazon gift cards, cause then I can just use them for anything that I need for the channel. It's really intuitive and super easy to use and you can use them for any receipt. The best part is if you use my link down below and enter in code CHEFPK when you sign up, you're gonna get 5,000 free points just for scanning your first receipt. Download Fetch at the link down below, collect those 5,000 free points to start earning rewards and thank you to Fetch for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to this massive feast. Now that we have most of our grocery prep ready, I actually am gonna be bouncing around quite a bit for the rest of this because I wanna prep some of these out of order and I guess this doesn't really make sense in the context of like, oh, this is just a straight up recipe guy video because this is really not one of those videos. So in this case, I actually am making Tom Kench's remoulade for the deep fried halibut that we're gonna have later. Now this isn't a traditional remoulade by any means because I am using kind of whatever ingredients I want to essentially make like a Cajun spiced mayo. So instead of parsley, I'm using green onion because I have green onion that I also need for a collie. And I think it's gonna taste really nice with that too. So I'm putting in three or four sprigs of green onion into the bowl and then the rest of this we'll use for a collie's poke. To those green onions, I'm gonna add like two spears of 
of pickles, and we're just gonna chop these up. Into here, I'm gonna hit it with some Worcestershire sauce, that, like three or four squirts of that. And then also, the, the main part of this is gonna be some mayo. I just bought Kewpie mayo, but then a little bit of mustard, maybe like two tablespoons worth of mustard. And then finally, some Cajun spice. This is just a pre-mixed Cajun spice that I actually got this from the same place I bought the flank steak that we're gonna make for Olaf. If they're selling it, I figure it's gonna be good. And then finally, a bunch of cracked black pepper. Oh yes, oh baby, put this on a burger. Oh my God, delicious, delicious. I just one shot that, that's good. Uh, I could drink this, probably not a good idea. Oh. Oh, oh, that's so damn good. Oh, it has a little bit of kick to it. <clears throat> that's nice. If you want any of these recipes, they will be in the description down below and over at chefpk.com, where you can also pick up that really cool Uzui shirt. This goes in the fridge. I'm gonna finish up working with Tom Kenshin. For that, I have some cod. Also, he's the catfish king, so if you can find catfish, that would be even better. Need salt. I just wanna cut these into manageable pieces. They don't need to be too big. They don't need to be too small. Maybe like this. This is a, this is a nice chunky. I'm gonna pop this right into our container, because I'm just prepping this out so we can get these ready to deep fry later in cornmeal and buttermilk and that's gonna be delicious. Fish, done. Just so that way that's ready to go. Apparently I don't have a lid for that, so we'll go into this one. Into the fridge, let's keep going. Remember how I said we're gonna be bouncing around with this? Well, next I'm gonna be doing Morgana's cupcakes because I wanna get these nice and frosted and not have to worry about them later because they can sit around. It's really tempting to just shove a whole one of these in my mouth right now, but I'm gonna wait until it's frosted. Now here's a pro tip. Take all of your cupcakes out, line them up, and you can just go down the line. This is the frosting that we made yesterday. I actually just whipped it up because it was in the fridge so it was a little bit cold. Fill this bad boy up. I did put a decorative tip on there. You can see that at the bottom. Just so when I pipe it, it doesn't just look like a poop. Oh. Oh, baby, look at that. I'm very happy with that. Huh? Nope. I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I always try to go like equal parts cake to frosting. Beautiful. Okay, cupcakes are frosted and these are gonna sit in the fridge. Morgana is done. We still have to grill the steak for Olaf, but I gotta get charcoal ready in a few hours, so we have to wait on that. Next, Akali's, I don't know why I'm holding this up, you can't. You can't see anything. Akali's sashimi platter. Now we don't want to cut the sashimi too early because you don't want to cut sashimi that early. Instead, we're gonna make some poke marinade. That's gonna be good. We'll fry the wontons when we fry everything else. Akali's poke marinade is super simple. It's one, two, three, four, five, technically six ingredients. First, I'm gonna take some muscovado sugar, which pop that in there, I'm gonna sweeten it up a little bit. To dissolve this, I have some boiled water. Yes, you can, it's fine. These containers hold soup and stuff. It just smells like straight up molasses, which I love. Then we're going to go in with some, go in, go in with some soy sauce, a little hit of yuzu juice, then the super secret ingredient chemical X. This is chili crunch from Momofuku. I used a similar marinade when I had done the challenge against Janelle Eats. That was really cool. And I had the spoon dirty. So we're gonna use the back end of the spoon. See how easy that was? Give this a taste. Beautiful, done. Uh, that is spicy. Oh, uh, that's good though. Since I actually feel like I'm a little ahead next, I have some heavy cream that I absolutely did not know what to do with that was left over. So uh, we're gonna make butter for the Pantheon baguettes. And for those of you out there, I will do something special for you. You can gift this. Disgusting. This is how you make butter. Guess I'll get my steps in, you know? This was a this was a stupid decision. I have been shaking this thing for about 10 minutes and it's starting to form. I got another like 10 minutes before this is done. Oh my god. It's been about 15 minutes of shaking. Vigorous arm work here, and it's starting to separate into butter and buttermilk. Let's check this bad boy. Oh yes! Look at beautiful, pure fresh butter. I do need to strain this out. Look at that thing. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna pour this back in here so we know to use this for Tom Kench. Then I'm gonna leave this here so it drains any additional liquid. Both of these just go in the fridge until we need them. Anytime I do these feast videos, my refrigerator is at capacity. The next thing I have to finish up is getting Akali's stuff prepped out. This is the sashimi and the poke. Now we're gonna be making poke out of the tuna, and then with the salmon, I think we're just gonna do it as sashimi. And I want this to be able to fit onto the wontons that we're gonna fry up later, so I'm gonna cut these relatively small. Tuna, done, super easy, diced up, goes right into here. Get this right in the fridge so it stays cold. Next is gonna be the salmon, and yes, I am cutting the salmon now because I wanna be able to plate up relatively quickly. Gandalf, would you like a little bit of salmon? Mm -hmm. I love how I called him over here. He's literally at my feet begging right now. Here's our beautiful salmon going right into this container. Gandalf. 
come. Hey, no reach. Okay. Oh God, don't eat my fingers. There's no more salmon on the fingers. We're gonna continue on with Akali's dish. And for that, I have some wonton wrappers. And all I'm gonna do is cut these right in half. Now these all have to be deep fried over there, but we're gonna deep fry these in a little bit of oil. Yeah, I do one of these motions. There's Gandalf. Hi buddy, take another one. And I'm just gonna do that for the next 10 minutes. That's not exciting. One eternity later. There's all of our wonton chips. These came out really, really nice. I guess they're going in the pantry. Next dish, Olaf. Now for Olaf the butcher, I have flank steak. This is a little big for my grill. So I'm actually just gonna cut this right in half. Just like that. This way it'll actually fit on my grill because as you guys know, I don't, I don't really own a grill in the traditional sense. So what I wanna do now is just make sure I season this right now. And then we're gonna throw it back on the fridge while we get the charcoals going. Go on. I forgot I have to let this heat up. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. We're gonna make this work. I really did want these giant pieces, but uh, it's just not, not, not gonna happen today. Look at that. Okay, we'll let this hang out for uh, 40 minutes. Got a, got a little, little charring on there. That's okay. This is gonna be delicious with chimichurri. I brought the flank steaks from inside and those charcoals were a lot hotter than I thought they were gonna be. So these are like medium well, which I really wanted them medium rare, but I think it's gonna be okay as long as we just smother it in chimichurri. The last thing to do is fry up that halibut. For the halibut, I have my flour, egg wash, and then cornmeal. I'm also gonna add some of the Arcasian rub spice mix that we picked up earlier into our flour. The reason why you always wanna spice your flour is because that's what has direct contact with that whatever protein you're using. So we're gonna go flour right into our egg wash. Use your other hand to grab it this time. And then the fish into the cornmeal. Now we have our beautifully coated fish. I'm just gonna actually leave that in the pan and we're gonna knock some more of these out. We now have our fish fried up. I'm actually gonna keep these two for breakfast. Hi, we're at the stove. I'm gonna shallow fry this halibut. This is the same oil that I did for the wonton, so I'm just reusing it. So this halibut is pretty much done and I turned the oven down to 200 to keep stuff warm. So we're actually gonna pull this out where the brisket is. We're gonna take our, oh no, we lost the crust. We're gonna pop this and pop that right there. It'll keep it warm. Hopefully I don't lose any more of this crust though. I just got that last batch of cod in the oven. I'm gonna keep it warm in here while we get everything else plated up. With everything ready, we just gotta plate a few more things up. I'm gonna take the poke, dress it with the marinade that we have. Give this a quick stir, and we're just gonna pop this right into this bowl. Place this right back there. That's my staging area, because I'm gonna need a, a lot of room. Next, we're gonna plate up that salmon. George, I have so much food. I hope you're hungry. Yes. This is the Don't ugliest look. plate up. <laughs> It, this is the only greens we have on this whole <laughs> on this whole feast is the chuka salad. Oh, we do have green onion though. We'll do some oh, yeah, green. Yeah, yeah, I was about There's, to say you can sprinkle uh, some little, green onion over it. A little bit of green onion on top. That's the extent of our vegetables for this feast. Cupcakes are um, basically. Oh yeah, they're right? very vegetarian, you know. Vegetarian? They are, you know, vegetarian. There's, right? there's veggies in the cupcakes, <laughs> kind of. Here, we'll put a little bit of ginger right over here. Yeah, okay, salmon. Where are we? I don't know where I'm gonna plate all this up quite yet. Next, I'm gonna plate up our slightly overcooked chimichurri flank steak. We're just gonna cover it in acid and onions. It'll taste delicious. I think what we'll do is we'll do bread and butter. So this is the baguette that I made with the fish in the remoulade. We're just gonna take our giant chunk of homemade butter. I'm not even gonna shape it. This is just gonna sit right there. Oh my God. Look at that. To balance it, we have to do the remoulade right there. So Tom Kench and Pantheon are ready. I'm gonna put it over on the big table. Let us press on. Okay, let's let's cut this brisket. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that's a that's a pretty nice crust. Oh my god, it's so hot. I think what we'll do too is we'll cut it right down the center. Oh my god, this is so much. Do we just keep it like this? Where's the ketchup? Oh, I ran out. <laughs> I would totally put ketchup on here. Ketchup. See Rachel's face. I know. <laughs> she hates me so much. Do you actually eat this with ketchup? I would put ketchup on oh the side. Oh my god, that's horrendous. I, I don't, don't care. care. So we got poke. You wanna pop that on the table? Rachel, my helper, thank you. And then the poke chips. Poke chips, that's it. We can finally, finally get this going. This is the League of Legends feast I would have made if I were invited to the tournament. And I'm very sad that I'm not, but at least I get to share it with you too. That's some kind of consolation prize. If you guys want any of these recipes, link is down below for that at chefpk.com. Uh, we're gonna start digging into this. Gandalf, would you, would you like a plate? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have fish stick with the remoulade because I've been I've been looking at this all day. Look at the remoulade. Oh my god. No. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Mm. The heat is quite nice. 
curious about the the well done the well done steak. Well done steak. Mm -hmm. Let's try it with the with the chimichurri. There's that bite. It's not very good. A little chewy, but I like the chimichurri on there. And I'm gonna finish it off with Morgana's cupcake because I'm done with all this salty food. One bite. One bite. One bite. One bite. I hate you. <laughs> I can't put that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you he has a big mouth. Please <laughs> subscribe. You said please subscribe. Yep, please subscribe. Play with your food. Oh. Keep playing with your food. Mm -hmm.